All right, everybody, welcome back. On the bench today, we have a Heathkit transistor checker, model IT-18. And uh, we're going to open it up, see if we can spot any internal issues, uh, put some power to it. I've already brought the meter down in the case. Sometimes these clamshells are a little bit difficult to uh, get the unit to come out, so I've already done that part. Calibration resistor, the tape had fallen off, so I'll get some tape and tape it back up in there. Uh, let's go ahead and take this out of the box. The side. So as you can see, uh, we have the meter, beta calibration, uh, NPN off, PNP, uh, beta adjustment, uh, beta times one, beta times ten. That switch feels okay. Calibration test and there's a, actually a transistor plugged into it right now and then there's also alligator clip for uh, plugging into uh, transistors that don't fit in the uh, the socket so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the construction on this unit fairly simple everything's point to point I don't see any bridged solder connections the contacts on these rotary switches look very dirty. So, let me grab some contact cleaner here somewhere. Ah, I see it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead uh, let's see here, precision resistors, diode, disk capacitor. Let's go ahead and put a little contact cleaner on that switch. And we'll just exercise it a bit. Very tarnished, so it may take uh, a little bit more attention than just spraying it with contact cleaner to get that resolved. Uh, I can start to see a line in the tarnish where the contacts are rubbing. So maybe that'll be okay. Let's go ahead and spray the uh, other switch here. These switches are spring-loaded, so they are uh, difficult to turn to some degree. Yeah. I can start to see a little bit of a line there where the switch contacts are touching. Let's see. Do we have contacts on both sides? We do. Okay. Then on this one... Yeah, looks like we do as well. Beta calibration switch looks like it's in fair shape. Okay. What transistor is plugged in here? Uh, we'll have to pull it out and take a look. 2N3906. Pretty standard transistor there. Alright. I don't have a uh, D cell. But what I will do is connect up to uh, my bench supply. And see if we can get this uh, meter to power on. The battery polarity is marked inside of the battery case uh, on the positive side. So we have that. I've already set my power supply for 1.5 volts. We're at 1.5. No current draw. Ah. So, yeah. When we switch to PNP, we do have meter deflection. Uh, 
Uh, that switch may not be working correctly. Well, I can see it sliding. There's just not much resistance there. May have to spray that down. All right. Well, uh, for a beginning, it looks like uh, it is working. I'll have to take a look at the documentation and uh, run through how to do a uh, transistor test. So let me st uh, pause the recording and uh, I will take a look at that procedure and uh, I'll come right back and we will uh, see if we can test the transistor. All right, we're back. I've taken a look at the manual and uh, what I have found out is that it's a uh, fairly simple procedure to uh, do some basic checks. So, what we're going to do, let me pull the information up here, to test beta, what you'll do if you know uh, the type of transistor that you have, uh, whether it's NPN or PNP, then you'll set the switch accordingly and you'll adjust the calibration, the beta calibration, so that you bring the needle to the calibration point and it, it's a little touchy the needle swings pretty rapidly alright so once we've done that then we simply switch to test and the uh, beta of the transistor, the gain will be read out uh, directly on the DC beta scale. And this transistor is indicating around 75 for the beta. So, if you don't know the type of transistor, uh, you follow the same procedure, switch it to PMP, uh, and then try to adjust the beta into calibration. If you can't, then it's an NPN, according to the manual. So, uh, for uh, your typical transistors, RFI of transistors, uh, beta will be in the 2 to 50 range, power 10 to 100, audio 40 to 400. Uh, there's also a by 10 scale. Uh, if your needle swings too far, you can switch into by 10, and then your reading is no longer direct, it's the reading times 10, which is pretty standard. Leakage tests. Uh, the function switch, you can read out the uh, collector to base current ICBO by turning the switch clockwise, and it'll read out on the lower scale, so we're at about 7.5. Uh, to read out the uh, collector to emitter leakage current, uh, turn the switch counterclockwise, and it'll read out on the same scale. So, uh, pretty basic. This is actually the first piece of test equipment that I ever owned, uh, the same model at least. When I was young, uh, my parents, I guess, had bought a whole bunch of equipment at a garage sale or an estate sale. And there were tube testers and uh, Heath kit items, and being that I was uh, young at the time, under 10, uh, and curious about how they were built, I took them all apart. Uh, this one happened to come my way as part of an estate that was given to me, uh, the remnants of an estate. So uh, I wanted to go ahead and, and see if I could get this working. It looks like it's working fine. We'll go ahead and switch the unit off. And we'll turn off the power supply. So what I need to do is uh, get a D-cell for this thing, and then I'll be able to use it for uh, testing transistors as it was designed. So I hope you found this video informative. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about this unit uh, or if you need any further information about this particular build, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you've uh, enjoyed the video, make sure you hit like. And uh, if you would, uh, share and subscribe. Have a great day, and uh, we'll be back soon.